All right, Chris, did you know that the New Orleans Saints have won five straight week one games, the longest active streak in the NFL? I did not know that, but it, it does make sense. It means they're due. It means they're due. Let's get this sucker started. Get dialed in, Panthers fans. Here comes an in-depth look at your team. Exclusive interviews. Locker room insight. Ready. Let's huddle up. Let's just do it, okay? For Panthers Playbook, driven by Carolina Ford dealers. Here are your hosts, Dennis Cox and Chris Lee. Welcome back to another episode of Panthers Playbook. That's Chris Lee, Dennis Cox here with you. By the way, leave your thoughts, Saints, Panthers, week one. Leave your thoughts in the comment section. Also, just give us your general thoughts on the season. Uh, before we get into that, by the way, Panthers Playbook brought to you by Carolina Ford dealers. Wherever you go, whatever you do with the power and technology of a Ford F-150 on your team, it's game on. See your Carolina Ford dealer today. Again, Saints, Panthers, yes, sir, yes, sir. week one. And Chris, I don't know who like nine of these guys are that are going to be possibly <laughs> suiting up for the Panthers this weekend. I, that's the thing. Since you and I last spoke, talking yeah. about the initial 53-man <laughs> roster, they've made so many moves. And I literally mean up to nine different guys on the roster this Sunday that weren't here during training camp, I got the list right here. You know what? I'm a, I'm gonna harken back to that old Dwayne Wade um, mm -hmm. meme. I love it. Love it. I abs absolutely love it, man. Yeah, I I've been looking at uh, Panthers fan Twitter, and there's people who are like freaking out about all this, and to them it looks like a bad thing. I say it's a good thing mm -hmm. because. What are we all in agreement with when it came down to last year? If it wasn't the worst roster in the NFL, Panthers had at least the second worst roster in the it NFL. Was right there. So you got to get better, right? Yeah. Okay. They did whatever whatever they had to do in uh, free agency. They did what they had to do in the draft. But that doesn't take care of everything. You don't go one season having the worst roster in the NFL and jump into the top half or the top third in the NFL just in one offseason. It just doesn't happen. So you take your opportunities where you take them. The whole cornerback thing, when we got a, three cornerbacks from the waiver wire plus a, a trade from Mike Jackson a couple days beforehand, there are some people who were kind of freaking out like, well, wait a minute, what did that mean about the guys before? It meant that they were cool with the guys before. Those, the guys before could have done a, a, a pretty good job if other folks were to go down. But Dane Jackson is hurt. Mm -hmm. J.C. Horn, we're just waiting on getting – I mean, I hope he plays the entire season. Not gonna but we're just here. waiting on getting the news that something mm -hmm. is wrong and he can't play for the rest of the season. And, and I, I really hope he plays 17 this year. Um, but at the end of the day, you got to look at, okay, well, after that, we have a few guys that are young. They're unproven. We still have to develop them. And, oh, wait a minute. All of a sudden, you got this guy who's six foot three, and Keenan Isaac. He's available. You got a guy who's six foot one and Shamar Bartholomew. He's available. You got this guy who's six foot one and Tariq Castro Fields. He's available. And then a few days before that, you got a guy who's six foot one, Mike Jackson. He's available. So now you've got all these guys who fit your profile that you want for cornerbacks instead of them being 5'10, 5 5'11. 5 they're 6'1, 6'1, 6'1, and 6'3. I don't see anything wrong with that. You yeah. kind of have to keep getting better as a team. This is what it's all about. And we saw some of those guys that got released and let go because of these waiver claims and, and all that. We saw them play last year in replacement for when J.C. Horn and, and Dante Jackson or C.J. Henderson, when those guys were nicked up. And guess what? They 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 didn't live okay. up to what they didn't they didn't live up to what they needed to do because guess what the team went two and fifteen last season. You mentioned those four corners. Also throw in there Lonnie Johnson, who they signed to their practice squad, <laughs> veteran player, who they're talking about possibly calling up for week one. You yeah. might literally have five new corners, yeah, on the roster this Sunday that weren't with the team at any point during training camp. Yeah, but like you said, Chris. They have to do everything and anything that they can to turn over this roster as much as possible. And like I said, of the 48 guys they're going to address on Sunday, you might see eight or nine. That's like one of every like six. That's literally what we're looking at. Like one of every five or six players wasn't on the team. I mean, gosh, this week they just signed Messiah Swinson off the practice squad, a tight end from the Green from Bay NXT? Packers. 
That, I, honestly, from, I think Messiah, Messiah, Messiah Swinson might be a name generated from the NXT. <laughs> like, dead serious. I saw the name. I was like, they, they literally they diving down into the performance center? Wait, well, hey, whatever you got to do. And but, the new North America champion. Yes. <laughs> Messiah we'll the, Swinson. Hey, hey, here's the thing. If he gets to the main roster, we're just going to call him Messiah. Is that what's going to happen? Um, Vince isn't there anymore, so he'll get, yeah, that's, he'll get then We don't have to worry about that. Yeah. But nonetheless, from the last time you and I talked, one new offensive lineman and Jarrett Kinston. Yeah. The five corners that we've mentioned, Messiah Swinson that we also mentioned. They signed Jamie Sheriff or claimed him off waivers from Seattle, uh, as well as John Radigan, the linebacker, as well. And they cut Caleb Von Chase on. The guys they signed to a one year, five million dollar contract. They said, you know what? You didn't show us, you didn't show us enough. Let him go. But but Jordan Matthews is on the 53. Let's go. Let's go. I mean, you know, here here's the thing. Um Again, none of these moves when I saw them made me feel like, dang, there's something wrong. Um, you know, I initially thought like maybe cutting Caleb on chase on uh, could have been good news for for somebody else. Maybe somebody else is coming a- along. You got a quick look at Sheriff and you're like, yeah, he's going to give us exactly what Caleb Von chase on is going to give us for mm-hmm. a lot less money. Um, you know, and so I'm not worried about any of this. But again, before. Um, we did before any of this happened, we said on this show that outside linebacker, the edge position was the weakest spot for the Carolina Panthers. Probably the weakest room on the, on the roster. Maybe well, we've, we yeah. were saying on the defense. Um, and I, after hearing Caleb on chase on wasn't there, I didn't feel like, Oh no, you know, because it's like, He's going to give you the same thing Echo Leota is going to give you. He's going to give you the same thing <laughs> that DJ Johnson is going to give you. Yeah. He's going to give you the same thing that if you were to, you know, if Mar- or Mari Barno is better, that he's going to give you, right? Uh, when he gets back on a roster. The, the real thing is we're waiting for DJ Wanham to see what he can do and see if he can have a pretty decent breakout year. Uh, but, you know, it's going to take him a, a little bit to, to get healthy. We know that in the offseason, this is going to be one of those positions of need they're going to have to take care of. Oh, yeah. Um, And you're not going to get just magically better this year at that Mm -hmm. spot. So that's going to be a weak spot. I I didn't feel like cutting Caleb on chase on really changed anything at all for the Carolina Panthers. It it was literally a lateral move. Mm -hmm. It it, 100 percent, 100 percent is, by the way, one of the reasons why you can't really make all the changes in in one offseason that you could. Or at least you want to. Panthers yeah. were over the salary cap up until yeah. Wednesday afternoon. Actually, they actually restructured the contracts today of both Taylor Moten as well as Shy Tuttle to create about ten point seven million dollars in cap space. Before they did that, Chris, the Panthers were like four and a half million dollars over the cap. Yeah. And that's the thing that's mind blowing. I think to us, not only as, as people that cover the team, but as fans as well, is that how do you have such a bad roster yet you were over the cap? Well, some of that, I, some of that came from like when you're waving guys, uh, when teams wave guys, like sure. their contracts are in place. So when you're picking them up, you're picking up what their contracts were for that. So that's what kind of brought them over. True. So now that you're in that situation, now you have to weigh: Is Caleb on Chase on going to be worth five million dollars for this year? Yeah. If we, we cut him now, we're good, and we really didn't lose anything. Yeah, exactly. Like, why are we going to pay a guy to be a healthy and active? Yeah. When we can have someone that's cheaper that could do the exact same thing. Uh, But nonetheless, just the fact that they were in that position to begin with, they were pressed up against the cap before all these waiver claims, and they had to make the moves that they did. Um, But again, that's also because you're paying guys like dead cap hits with Von Bell, with uh, Dante Jackson, with uh, Hayden Hurst. Those three guys right there account for nearly $28 million of dead cap. Just those three players. Just those three. Hurst. But hey, all these roster moves and changes are made. We got a game on Sunday, Chris. We we got a game on Sunday at New Orleans. And honestly, I'm not entirely sure what to expect. I'm not entirely sure what to expect. Brand new head coach, new offenses, uh, new offensive coaching staff, new offense as a whole, a whole bunch of new pieces on offense, along with all those new guys on defense that we mentioned. I really don't know what to expect coming up this Sunday. I really don't. I don't either, but I do expect um, the Panthers to play hard, right? And and that well, that might sure. sound that might sound like a given, but there were times last year where it felt like the team kind of gave up during the game, 
It oh. felt like uh, there were times last year that the team was playing very, some very uninspired football, right? Mm -hmm. And so sometimes you just need to get the basics right. And uh, going back to people who were upset over the past couple uh, weeks over these, um, you know, new folks that have joined the roster. Like, if you're really, if you're really upset, that's because that you probably had too high expectations anyway. You were thinking that, oh man, this team is gonna go ten and seven. They're gonna go eleven and six. No. This is this is a team that probably will win six or seven games. Yeah. And then um, <clears throat> a lot of other games will be a lot closer, a little bit more competitive than what they were last year. And they should look a lot better. And you can still you can see the improvement. And then there's room for them to go improve again for for the next year. Uh, but against the Saints, um, you know what um, Dave Canales said, like, hey, like, this is a, a defense that's really um, going to challenge everything. I'm really looking at, honestly, just what the offense is going to do. I feel like the defense is going to show up. The defense mm -hmm. has been retooled. And for the most part, uh, you have a lot of key players that are still there. I'm excited to see what Davion Clowney is going to do. Excited to see what those new pieces are going to do. But I don't expect the defense to to take a nosedive at all. No, I, I still ex I still expect them, maybe not top five. I expect them to at least be top uh, 10 in the NFL, right? There's some certain categories where they definitely need to improve for sure. Yeah, and you know, and one of the spots last year was they weren't really getting sacks on a quarterback, right? No, so they were thirty first in the NFL last season in sack percentage. And I'm 31st. not expecting that to change, honestly. I'm neither am I. <laughs> you know, but am I. but now now that you have the athletes that you want in your secondary, mm -hmm. and now that you have uh you know two healthy, really good linebackers and Josie Jewell and and Shaq Thompson, and then also let's talk about the, the that defensive line. I think they're going to be better at stopping a run. I oh, think yeah. there's a chance that the Panthers could uh, cause more turnovers throughout the season. I'm not talking about this game in particular, throughout the season. And uh, I think they could, you know, challenge teams uh, on, on the on the pass a little bit more. And hopefully the offense can do their job and at least, you know, play the field position game so that you're not giving the ball back to the other team uh, when you're there, you know, your defense has their back against the goal line, making it easy for, for them to score on the defense. So, We've seen over the last year when the Panthers' defense uh, is is um, is defending the full field, they usually can make stops. That's mostly what mm -hmm. I'm looking for is to see if any of that is better. Uh, yeah. Other than that, I'm along for the ride, honestly. And that Me might too. sound like a not a, a non answer, but I'm along for the ride to see what's going to happen on Sunday. And then I think from there, I'll start setting more expectations if I expect them to lose. If I expect them to win, we'll see what happens after that. Some areas on defense in which they can improve. We mentioned sack percentage again. I don't think that's really going to change. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Brian Burns is gone, but you're still 31st in the NFL last season with when it comes to sack percentage. By the way, I may I, I messaged you this, Chris, a few weeks ago. If a Carolina Panther, if a player gets double digit sacks this season, I will get a Panthers tattoo. That, that dead serious because I don't see it happening. Where? That's the real question. I'll probably get it like on my my you know upper back or something okay. like that. Okay, maybe. But that that's what I do. It ain't going on the backside. And it ain't going to be a teardrop. But there might be some <laughs> teardrops this season. I can tell you that much. But there will be, I guarantee, good rush defense. Like you mentioned, Ashawn Robinson coming in. The Panthers yes. last season, in terms of yards per carry by the opposing team, they were tenth in the NFL. Four point one yards per carry. Tenth or tied for tenth in the NFL, which is really good. Where they really need to improve, along with pass rush. It's red zone defense. Carolina Panthers were 28th in the NFL in red zone touchdown percentage defensively. So that means 63% of the time last season when the opponent got into the red zone, they scored a touchdown. 28th in the NFL. That's where this defense, what we saw, could be good, can really elevate. If you're forcing more field goals, you're going to be in games a lot more. But the offense, I think, is going to be much improved with all the guys that they brought in. And I think this offense is the little glimmer that we saw against the, the Buffalo Bills in that final preseason game, I think the offense is going to be on the field longer. I think it's going to help alleviate the defense from having to play with sh against short fields like you had mentioned, like they did a lot last season. And I think yeah. that's really going to alleviate a lot of the pressure. And I think that helps elevate the defense as well. We know that Dave Canales has mentioned they want to run the ball and go play action. They want to run the ball, go play action. I would yeah. not be shocked if we see the Panthers have like 35 minutes of time of possession in this coming game, just based off the style of play that Dave Canales wants to have.
Well, I'll also go back to uh, just the defense, and and here's the the part that I'm looking at. Right, um, I know that Chris Olave is a really good receiver. Stunt. I know Michael Michael Thomas is not going to be. Um, you he know, won't he, be there. He's out again for week one. He's go figure. On, he's even on a roster. <laughs> go figure. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, one of the things I'm going to be looking at is um, I, I don't know. And, and and I haven't studied the the Saints like this, but like they have a lot of the usual players. How do they get better on offense? I'm not sure, honestly. Mm-hmm. I'm really not sure how they've really gotten better on offense. I don't really believe in Derek Carr. Um, and yeah. I was excited that the Panthers didn't stick their necks out to try to go get old boy last year. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was just like just just take a chance on a rookie. Like, do not go get yeah. Derek Carr. By the way. If they did get Derek Carr on last year's team, it probably would have looked worse than what Bryce Young did. Anyway. Um, Much of the same, probably. I I think that Bryce is probably a better passer. Um, what are, are you still doing with Taysom Hill, right? Like, is he mm-hmm. still going to be a part of that that gadget um, um, package that you use? Uh, how is uh, Alvin Kamara going to look? Is he going to start to decline? He's been in the league now for what six seven seasons or, or whatever he, he's actually been on the de- on the decline for the last three years believe he, it or not. he has been mm-hmm. he, he has been so like what does it look like this year um i i think this is a defense that is looking to try to be very opportunistic in the panthers i'm that's the that's really the matchup that i'm interested in seeing and that's the matchup i feel like is going to end up winning the game here you know and, and, and making the actual difference Hopefully the offense can look better and do their thing, score some points, and not turn the ball over. But where the game is really going to be won is, uh, I think, for for the Panthers' defense versus mm-hmm. uh, the Saints' offense. That's really kind of what I'm looking at, and that's where I see the the best opportunity for the Panthers to win. Uh, you know, stop their run. Don't fall for their gadget play with Taysom, uh, Taysom, uh, Taysom Hill. Excuse me. I was going to call him Tayshawn Hill. <laughs> hey, him too. He was born somewhere else, um, <laughs> but um, but also like you know, can you stop their pass game and maybe not necessarily uh, sack the quarterback, but make Derek Carr very uneasy because we know if Derek Carr is uneasy, he makes mistakes. Oh yeah. So that's really what what I'm looking at, and uh, that's where hey, all the new cornerbacks that's going to be there. Let's get some let's get some interceptions. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm 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 here all that. Um, so mind when it comes to the the New Orleans Saints uh they put themselves in like a salary cap hell and a lot of those guys that they have been paying over the last few years those bills finally come due because they just kept pushing stuff down the line so yeah. they actually have put themselves in a situation where you know what they really can't pay a whole lot and you're starting to see some of the effects of that now granted they also this offseason were able to you know, bring in a guy like Chase Young, who I think is overrated. Uh, but nonetheless, he's opposite of uh, Marcus Davenport. So you still have to be at least aware of that. But Alvin Kamara, his production has dropped. The last three years for Alvin Kamara, 2021, 3.7 yards per attempt. 2022, mm. four yards an attempt. Last year, 3.9 yards per attempt. His first four years in the NFL, 6.1, 4.6, 4.7, 5.0. Stellar. He's he's in his eighth year. Like it, Hello. there is a decline. It's just naturally what happens. There is a drop off that comes there. But to me, Panthers can take this thing. Panthers can take this thing. Oh, oh, Panthers can oh. win this one. I'm oh. not guaranteeing anything, but they could take this thing. They you, could take. You, it. If you look on their roster, I, I mean, not the roster, but their their schedule. Um. There's again, I, I think six, seven wins is is likely. Um, but there's a lot of games that you look at where you're like, they can win this game, mm-hmm. right? Saints game, you can win that. Chargers mm-hmm. game with <laughs> the craziness that happened to their roster over the offseason, and it's the home opener, you can win that. At Raiders, you can win that. I'm gonna say this at mm-hmm. Bears, you can win that. It'll be tough. No, it ain't going to be easy. But you can win that. Mm-hmm. Falcons, eh, I don't know. Toss up. We'll see what happens by the time we get to week six. At Commanders, you can win that. Oh, you can win that one. At Broncos, you can win that. You can win that one. Saints are back home, you can win that. Yeah. Giants in Germany, 
You can win that. Mm-hmm. We're going to skip over the Chiefs. Uh, <laughs> Tampa Bay <laughs> at home. You can win that. Yeah. Let's skip over uh, Philadelphia. Um, yeah. let's, skip, let's skip over the Cowboys. Move on. Although I'm skeptical of the Cowboys. So As we all should be. Let's, let's wait till we get back to week 15 because I might mm-hmm. change my mind. Uh, Arizona, you can win that. At Tampa Bay, you can win that. And then at Atlanta, I think you lose that because Atlanta's probably going to be playing for, um, you know, their playoff positioning and all that. And I just think they're a better team with a better roster. That's a lot of games that you can win. Now, if you will or not is a different story. And I think uh, Sunday's game is going to set everything up for us. It's going to show us what this team is capable of doing. I'm 100% with it. I'm 100% with it. I think you and I are on the same page. I think it's around a six-win team this year, but it's going to be a lot more competitive. We're right here. We're here. Here. And we want you to be here with us. Again, leave those comments. Let us know your thoughts on the Saints game this weekend. Let us know your thoughts on what you predict on this season for this team. Be right here with us. And also be right here with our sponsor, Carolina Ford Dealers. With Ford F-150 on your team, it's game on. See your Carolina Ford dealer my F-150. Today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I love my F-150, man. After the game, we come back home. I'm going to go to Mullins and pick up my Ford F-150, drive back to Charlotte, man. It's going to be good, man. I hope that dude shows up on Sunday, by the way. Bro. I hope that dude shows up on Sunday. I'm going to be real. I need five catches. Five? 75 yards and a tutty. Oh, okay. You, you I want, need you that. You want him to pop off, pop off. I need that for get. I need that. Hey, Deontay, go out there and get me six for 115 and a tutty. Against Lattimore? Hey, Chuba. Bring home about 95 yards, homie. And a tud. And a tutty. I need it. I also want four catches for Jatavian Sanders and a touchdown. Let's go. Let's go. We just scored 28 points for them right there. Let's go. (laughs) We just. Let's keep it rolling, baby. (laughs) Subscribe. We'll see you guys after the game on Sunday. I need it.